welcome Peter. Good evening. Peter, uh, um, Peter, sorry, somebody was just passing me, you know, like it's live television, I'm getting, a, I'm getting past a, uh, uh, getting past a note. It's very important. Uh, my, my daughter's just got engaged. Um, so, should, um, so, Peter Jones is uh, lives in Bel Air in South Australia, and uh, he's part of what's called we we know of men's sheds, but Peter is part of what's called the bike shed. Um, he's attached to Blackwood Uniting Church, in uh, so he's in Bel Air in South Australia, and. Uh, Peter has a passion for bikes. Peter has a passion for a lot of things. I think he's uh, he's done a, done a few um, had a few careers in his life, um, as short as his life has been. So, but more, we, we just want to hear about you and your passion for transport and for bikes, Peter. So I will um, disappear for a sec. I will then I will share the screen with um, your PowerPoint. So take it away, Peter. I'm ready when you are. <laughs> okay, good evening everyone. I offer uh, greetings from South Australia, land of magnificent red wine, a couple of sporting events that have yet to be stolen, and we're currently COVID free, so it's really good over here. But onto the bike shed itself. The bike shed, which is what it's currently known as, was established over 20 years ago by the then minister of the local church. The minister noted that there was a lot of activities for the ladies, but very little for the men. Actually, there was nothing. So he established a shed where men could uh, sort of gather with other blokes and do blokey things and fix anything that was broken. The original participants fixed anything, furniture, electronics, electrical. People would find things just to come up to the shed to help have them fixed. It was a nice community effort. Over time, it was found that grease and grime didn't go very well with uh, woodwork and neither of those went very well with electronics. Push bikes came through as something that many people wanted and could use. So over time, the shed evolved into refurbishing bikes for people. I joined the group back in about 2016. It was the only focus. Bikes were all we did. We refurbished them for people in need. They were donated to refugee organizations, modified for the remote communities, given to people who had lots of other children hanging around that needed transport. So there was a lot of need, a lot of call for, and we stepped up where we could. We get our bikes through the community, support from people. People donate their unwanted, unused, unserviceable bikes. We pick them up out of hard rubbish. We find them on the side of the road. We just wait for the wheels to stop spinning and then we pick them up. But sometimes bikes cannot be economically brought back to life. We strip them for parts, we strip them for salvage. Metal is sorted into basic steel, aluminium, bronze. In fact, people have suggested that we would be the ultimate in recyclers, and that is a pun that's intended. Last year, we processed about 400 bikes. Nearly 200 rebuilt bikes went back into the community. Over one and a half tons of scrap metal was generated. Many, many kilos of aluminium was sorted when you consider that scrap metal currently sells for nine cents a kilo, aluminium, depending on the type, between two and four dollars a kilo, it really does pay to separate. We're fairly firm in that we do not sell bikes. We give them to people who need them. We do ask that if they're in a position to donate back to the church, it's appreciated. We can even suggest a suitable donation level for a bike when asked. But one of the fears is that we donate a bike to someone and it turns up on Gumtree or eBay the next day for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. We're not here to make other people rich. We're here to help where we can. If we provide a bike to a person, it increases their reach into the community, 
giving bikes to refugees, help them to explore without relying on other people for transport. By giving bikes to people in need, we, in some small ways, help them with self-esteem, offer a degree of hope and freedom. Giving bikes to kids, we allow them more freedom, independence, sense of individualism, and some cuts and bruises and worried mothers. But any mother will tell you that's normal. People, uh, transport gives people an opportunity to expand their world and have a go. It's about as Aussie as we can get without the Barbie, Esky and Ute. Currently, we've got 12 to 14 people on the books. We can expect between six to 10 any Wednesday morning when we're normally open. Most of the people up there are getting on in the years. In fact, I would be perhaps the youngest one there and I'm over 60, so I'm not that young. Most of them don't have clocks, don't use calendars, but we still manage to get along quite well. We even have a lady in our group. Liz is not a token female. Liz is a serious push bike nut, as are most of the people up there. She has a current racing license. Veterans, I believe they're called, but not everyone up there is that avid into push bikes. I have a particular focus in bikes. I like retro race. Now they're any 10 speed old Repco type bike or Super Elliot's or Malvern Star, any of the old ones, but things that are 30, 40 odd years old. I'm just strange. Ask my long suffering wife who informs me I currently have 26 bikes in the shed. I'm glad she counted them, it saves me the trouble of having to count them. Summing up the shed in general, it's been good for the community, it's good for the recipients, it's good for the people that go up there and help. It gives them a sense of camaraderie, gives them a sense of, oh, the image on the screen at the moment was our first electric bike. We took it apart three weeks ago, we're still trying to figure out how to put it back together. But we'll get there eventually. So, the bike shed. It's been good for everyone that's been involved. We've had a ball. Thank you for listening to me rambling. You can come back, Andrew. All right, I can keep talking. There's nothing no, no, like that's right. I'm, the audience. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm pretty my lack of dexterity with stopping sharing the screen and coming back, uh, stop, you know, unmuting, bringing back my video. Mm. Thank you, Peter. I, while you were talking, I was looking for the bike emoji to say thank you to Peter via a bike emoji rather than uh, the uh, heart or like emoji. Um, that's great, Peter. I think um, I know that when we first um, talked about you coming along and you were saying why 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 am I here yeah why are you here but I think um, as I said by, by listening to you and understanding that the, the importance of bikes in society and the importance of bikes as a, a form of transport um, and a, a form of great green transport for particularly low socioeconomic mm. economic people then I think you're here for a reason and I'm sure you'll get lots of questions later